Hello everyone and welcome to the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call for July 6th, 2022. Um, today we're going to be having a Jirapalooza. The agenda and um, uh, has been linked in the public chat if you would like to sign in if you haven't done so already. And um, I will share my screen so that uh, you can see the same things that I do. Bear with me one second while I figure out which one is which. Share, there we go. So, can you see my screen? Is that what's displaying? Yep. Excellent. Okay, great. So, some of the things to bring up is that we do have a SkyCon registration, which is open. And uh, if you click on the link, you can sign up. It is free. There is a watch party going on in Ann Arbor, Michigan with Dr. Chuck. Um, and for today, we're planning on doing our Jirapalooza, and we have two tickets with which to review. The first one being one from Sean Foster. So let's go take a look at that. I haven't um, taken a peek at that as yet myself. Okay. So this is SAC 47466. Uh, pop that in the over here so everyone has the link so it's saying gradebook message students not all groups should appear and that's gradebook ng which i believe is new gradebook which is the one that most people have in yeah Saturday. oh so okay i just want to make sure um so general we have Nothing different. Test plan. I'm sure you have some groups and a TA who only belong to some of them. Go to gradebook. Check the sections filtered. Just groups which should belong, users belong to should appear. Add an item. Edit the item. Message the students. Click only students in a particular group. Only the groups to which the TA belongs should appear. Okay. So this hasn't been merged into 22 yet. Um, a pull request is created. So that seems that that's kind of been approved. Uh, it does say merged. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the question here is. Um, I think it, it seems to be that not all the groups should appear for the TA to message. Right, and that makes sense. The, the very first comment from Sean um, all the way at the bottom, because the yeah. comments are in reverse order. He says the instructor, it sh this should not affect instructors. Correct. Because Maybe something to discuss with the TNL group. And I would agree with his comment there. Absolutely. It should, in my opinion as well, only affect teaching assistants because they're, they can be set to only grade sections or groups yeah. distinctly. Um, yeah. And the instructor needs to be in all groups because, well, they're the instructor. Uh, sometimes I forget our instructors are like TAs in the nightly. Pull request created, tested on 22. Tested on in which a TA does not belong to also appear in the filter and only students in the group. Okay. Well, since it's been merged, I believe that means that it's been approved by others as well. So I believe that yeah. we're all good that way. Um, I think so too. All right. So this has been. I'm, putting a, no I'm putting a note in the. Uh, Jury itself? Pad. Oh, okay. I'll grab it from there then. And I'm going to remove the um, TL uh, label because we've now looked at it. So I believe yeah. I can add a label for TL. Uh, TL reviewed. Thank you very much. Um, and that that's all set. Well, that was easy. That was easy. I, I love when they're easy. All right, let's go on to the next one. <laughs> All right. Let's open SAC 33995 and pop that also in here so everyone can get to it. Oh, my. OK. This one's a beastie. Did you send this to us? Nope, Laura no. did. Okay, uh, let's see. Roll up Jira for import from site, duplicate, and course creation from template. This will need a lot of us to look at, I think. Um, 
because it's the imported yeah, site. Duplicate, import from site, create a new shell in a work site, and choose reuse from site during setup. Um, I think the duplicate is gone. Or yeah, I don't. I, I don't see a duplicate. So it, your results will likely appear to backend process in which the student information system files you sent create core shells. Okay, I'm sorry. Did I cut you off? I apologize, Christina. No. So let's go down and take a, a look at what this is all about. Oh, wow, this is a, a slightly dated. Yeah, it's kind of been an ongoing project to update the site import and course site creation processes so that they work consistently um, and properly. <laughs> So Josh has suggested we talk about this, but it's not clear to me exactly what he wants us to talk about. Right. And where this, what stage this project is at. Yeah, this is, the notes are pretty um, dated, but I guess it's just to combine all of these other items such as. Yeah. A banner notifying that this is, that's complete. Um, I'm going to take a peek at that. We'll see what that is. Looks like a few of them are still awaiting review, so they're part of my triage backlog. Oh, okay. So I'll talk to you later this afternoon about that. Um, let's take a quick peek at the banner notifying. Okay, your import process is finished. Refresh the page. So these are just all of these items. Okay. I think that makes sense to have a banner notifying that the import's complete. I have emails about them when I do an import from a site that it's been yep. uh, put in place. Um, all right, so should we assume that this afternoon, Christina, I'll meet you uh, if you're up to it for the triage and we'll go through the ones that are, uh, you know, uh, awaiting that. Triage isn't today. Today's what? Oh, today's Wednesday, not Monday. Sorry, each day is beginning to feel like Monday. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been very, very busy. So what is it that we have open to look at on this? Yeah, that's what's not clear to me is what exactly should be, what needs to be discussed about this. I'm guessing, let's take a quick peek at this one. Tool set to invisible are visible after import from a site. Site with several tools, one lessons page. Mark all of the tools as invisible. The settings should persist after the file, after the copy of this issue is fixed. In another blank site import, click the checkbox name next to the tool. So it's it's the making them invisible when they come into the new site. Mm -hmm. Okay. That seems like a very reasonable thing because they were um, invisible in the last site. Huh. That makes sense. What do you guys think of that? Yep. Okay. So, so far, everything that we're looking at on this particular ticket is... Uh, let me just close out of those. That they're all... Huh, I'm really not sure what he wants us to do with it. Yeah, I mean, it's not clear to me either. I mean, I can add a comment that's we're happy to look at things, but put the notes in, we can just drop it in our uh, etherpad. But basically, that we're happy to look at those things that are open. And, but so far, we're not seeing anything that's like dreadfully bad. Um, 
or <laughs> couldn't be there. So I'm not quite sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, we have those two. Do we have any others? In the, we have no others in the parking lot, which is great um, from last time. So I guess we should move on to our list for Aperio Teaching and Learning. Yep. Excellent. Okay. So we have uh, SAC 47493. I'll open that in a new page. Give everyone the link. I'll make that a little bigger so we can read it because I've got terrible eyesight. Much testing quizzes apply a rubric to questions randomly drawn from a question pool. That looks okay. awfully familiar. I don't know where that came from, Christina. <laughs> um, I'm going to read through your test plan just so I have an idea of what the what I think the problem or the the issue is. Create a question pool with one multiple essay, mixed questions, multiple essay. Create a rubric that can encompass all of these essay questions. Excellent. Create a test. Uh, okay. And we're going to randomly pull from these three pools, publish, take the test as a student, ensure that you can enter scores and comments using the rubric to both grade by student and grade by question. Good news. I was trying okay. to brainstorm where we could, how we could have the random draw from a pool and still apply rubrics because it's always been an issue because the rubrics are tied to the course and the t question pools are tied to the instructor. So I thought about the, the question yeah. I had for teaching and learning is when I've got instructors who are doing a random draw from a question pool, if their essay questions or file upload manually graded questions, they're all of a similar theme and perhaps one well-created rubric could grade all of them. Mm -hmm. If you They know, certainly should be. <laughs> Down onto the general tab, I give you an example of uh, one of those questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Sherry, who teaches art appreciation for us, has question pools where it is the exact same question, you know, explain the difference in these artistic terms and apply it to this particular artwork. And there's seven, eight questions in the pool with each a different piece of artwork. And, and the rubric that you would use to grade those questions should be the same. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree with your um, scenario, your 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 proposal that um, <clears throat> if if the questions are in a pool and you're doing a random draw, they all should, in good practice, they should all be gradable by the same rubric true do the do the there's a point when you do a question pool if you want to just refresh my memory um christina when you are allowed to adjust the points for the exam is that correct mm -hmm. is that when it's associated with the rubric that's what i proposed um if you scroll down i attached a i i, I massaged a screenshot <laughs> massaged nice change okay. the wording to say this question, but. Yeah, um, Miguel, it'd be um, essay, file upload, or the student audio responses, the qu question types that can have rubrics attached. I think, personally, I think this is a brilliant idea. I think that's a very good solution, Christina, actually. Yeah. So really, that's the good place to put it. I hadn't thought of it before. Really nice. Um, I think that we should definitely say it's been reviewed by us and approved. So if you want to write the notes, Charles, in the in the Etherpad, I'll I'll put them back in after the call and add these. But I really think that this has a. The biggest question is, can we do that? Is it feasible from a programming standpoint? I hope so. Because I really like this too. <laughs> like I said, I figured question one was for teaching and learning to answer, and question two would be for 
any of the developers to answer. Yep. Great. Excellent. Fantastic. Really fantastic. Okay, and I will do that after the call so you don't have to sit there and you don't have to watch that occur. Oh, look, another one. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, and this one is uh, SAC 47470. And, uh, we have Miguel, Matt, please make sure everybody to sign into the Etherpad and feel free to join in the conversation. Uh, is this the second one? Did I click on the correct one? Yes. Uh, we'll just do it anyway. <laughs> All right. Um, this is rubrics add option to only show graded rubrics to students and hide preview. Uh, when you attach a rubric to a test question, assignment, or gradebook item, you have two options. Hide the rubric for students and adjust individual student scores. Christina would like to suggest a new option that would split the hide rubric from students into two options. Hide rubric preview ungraded from students and hide graded rubric from students. The option to hide the preview from students would prevent students from seeing the rubric preview option. This would enable the instructors to create rubrics to include information about the desired response, answers, and the criteria or rating description. So you want to clarify a little bit on that? I'm, I'm a little confused by that portion, Christina. So some instructors have been like to use rubrics to grade, but they use um, their own paper rubrics because their criterion for it include, for lack of a better description, the right answer. So they don't want to let students preview that rubric. Or if I tell you, you know, you identify this trait, this trait, and this trait successfully, um, it takes that, away. That is, the, that actually is kind of the answer. I, I see what you're saying. So being able to hide the preview, but only show the graded rubric um, would let instructors who have rubrics that include the correct answers in the criterion or the rating descriptions without, be able to, without having to go back and edit it to attach the rubric or unhide it after students submit. That seems to be a saving of time for them as well. Any feedback from the group? I'm going to pop back over. Miguel agrees that it makes sense to him. It makes sense to me as well. All righty. OK. Back over there, and I'll uh, put the TL reviewed. And I will, if you've added comments in the Etherpad, Charles, I will put them in afterwards. Labels. OK.
Did you guys lose me? Yeah, if you were talking, we weren't hearing anything. Yeah, my audio. It's my headset. My apologies. Um, so when looking at the folder is hidden in a future date, the email option should be disabled uh, or give the instructor more options. So uh, I'm sure everyone read this while I was on mute, but um, for a folder that's hidden, the email notification should be disabled. I don't know how other people's instructors use the resources and communication option. So that's why I was asking while I was on mute that the um, that maybe some feedback from others who have uh, whose instructors use communication from the resources folder. Yeah, to be honest, I'm not sure if any of our people do that or not. Um, anyone else? My thought on this is, oh, Christina, please speak. Just, I don't think, um, I'm not aware of any of our instructors using the notification when they add any files to resources. Right, it's not usually, that's not our training methodology, but that doesn't mean that it isn't others. Um, I don't think that, I think it seems legitimate that uh, that an, a notification be, if they are using that feature, that that feature be, uh, have a limitation based on whether the folder is hidden or content within it. Certainly makes sense to me. Yep. Okay. Date set or not, if the email cannot be delayed until the from date arrives, then the email notification should be disabled. I, I agree with that. Um, since the folder settings determine if it's one available, when it's available, the instructor adds a folder, the folder settings should be taken into account at the time. Okay. Maybe get a grayed out feature where um, a specific date of time. I agree. Um, instructor sees a hidden resource italicized with the cross eye out icon. Um, so knowing that that would all be if they uploaded something to a hidden folder that that would not be able to be notified about. I seems I believe that seems reasonable and I'm going to state that we've reviewed it and if you could add the notes to our etherpad I will um, add them later to state that we think that this, this seems kind of reasonable and since it goes along with the resources add custom instructor notifications yeah very important okay All right, moving on. We've got honor pledge enhancements from um, back in March. So that's 47022. And this way everybody has that link. This issue resolves around assignments and the honor pledge enhancements. Um, the SAC 33914 resulted in requiring students to read and agree to the honor pledge and assignments prior to reading the assignment details. The argument at this time was that this would make it a consistent experience with testing quizzes. There are some concerns with the design change. Um, Beginning with the scenario, an instructor wishes to allow students the time to read, review, understand, and perhaps ask questions regarding the requirements of an assignment. So the ins instructor creates an assignment, sets the open date well in advance of the due date, perhaps a month or more, adds an honor pledge as the students open and review the assignment details and perhaps any other attached resources. They can thoughtlessly agree to the honor pledge and never encounter it again by the time the student ends up actually submitting the assignment D's or weeks, months later. The student may not remember that what they agreed to, much less reflect upon the very ethics that the honor pledge was intended to engender. So this is, so far that seems okay. Um, does it seem like they're asking for the honor pledge to be just before they actually take the So start? here's here's my question about this. Why not just use the visible date? If you want the students to be able to see it before they can actually do it, there's a, um, 
a visible date option in assignments, wouldn't that preclude the necessity of having to do anything about this? Or am I wrong? I do not know this visible date. Well, we have it. It might be an option that's not turned on. Because we have the open I think date, the due date. I, and think, I think it might be an option that has to be turned on. Uh, anybody on this call know about that? Oh. But the, okay, that's interesting. Um, anybody on the call? Let's see. There is a checkbox to add. It's, it's labeled use visible date is, is what it's labeled. And if you check that box, then you get another visible date field. Um, that you can open, they, that you can set. And that allows the student to view the assignment, but they still can't submit it. They can't do that until the open date. Does anyone, you said there's a checkbox to add it in the assignment. Jennifer, can you be a little, um, it, it, I don't have, we don't have that on our particular uh, version of Sky. Yeah, I can. I don't know if I can paste in the, let me see, the little image, but like it's under, if you go into an assignment, it's mm -hmm. underneath um, where it says available. It's the very first thing. So I think people might scroll by it. Um, and if you check it, like Charles said, you get a date field, just like an open date that you can make it visible. So it may, I don't know, mine is turned on. I don't know if any of our faculty use it. But it's really, it's right under the word availability in ours when you do yeah. um, create an assignment. And then it says open date, due date, except until. That's great. I'll have to take a look at that because I haven't. Yeah, I, I think enabling it is a system setting. If I remember correctly. I think it would have to be because I just pulled up our assignments and I don't have such a checkbox. I know. Well, our, I think it's been there for like since 19 or maybe 20. We're, we're on, on 20. 20 now. We're on 21, but if there's a property to enable it, we might not have known about it. Yeah, because ours might have just been auto enabled when we upgraded. Um, so the question is, what is that property called so we can take a look at it in our, our dev instances ourselves? Anybody know? Matt, you know? there nope okay um let's update this with your solution there charles and see um and, and i would come back to this i think we need um some feedback from others as well for those who have or didn't even know like myself that the option existed the only thing i'm i'm not sure about is how does the honor pledge work with a visible date? Do you have to click on the on, honor pledge to even view it? That I'm not sure about. We'd have to check that. Okay. All right. That would be that would. So let's come back to this and see if we can get. Um, we can test it out somewhere uh, and take a look. We can return uh, regroup on this one because I think that's a interesting solution, but again, a surprise because we don't have it in ours and um, nor does Christina. So it would be nice to see what it looks like ourselves. Thank you. Any other feedback on that particular one from anyone else in the group? Thanks again, Jennifer, for uh, sharing that. Okay. 
Uh, the next one I have on our list is uh, SAC 46949. And as soon as I get the link, I'll open it for everyone. Oops. This is assignment 24 hour notice, add options for selection of roles to receive the notice. This is from Alan, so it's a, going to be a detailed ticket. Uh, the purpose is the feature, it's a feature request which seeks to add additional controls about the 24 hour notice about a pending assignment within the assignments tool. This is to specifically allow an instructor to set whether the notice should only go out to assignment takers students or also to the graders for the uh, instructors and TA. Um, they find that there's a good pending, that is a good addition to Sakai. The improvement helps alert students about outstanding work, uh, but and also gives the professor an extra tool so that they can say, hey, yes, the student did know about that due date. Um, this in Sakai prior to 20, the notification went to all users. Um, for some, this was a nuisance. For others, it was a benefit. So the request seeks to add an option to receive the warnings as well and just as a security blanket and assurance that the students were sent the message. So this actually sounds um, rather simple, but um, I am not technical. So I'm asking your opinion, team. So he's looking to the system property uh, so when you do the testing to just like one hour before the deadline. Any feedback? Anyone think it's a good idea? I can see his explanation. I just definitely want to make sure that it's like a radio button to choose between students or students and graders and not check boxes because then we've got to QA the possibility of someone chooses the sent 24 hour notification but doesn't choose one or either of the groups. And what is the what is the default then? Or like said, Although, make it a radio button so it's with a default of you know just students mm -hmm. rather than but, check boxes. Well, except that he's just giving two options: students only or graders only. What if you want both groups to see it? I, I think it is talking about um, not graders only, but students and graders. Well, I'm looking at the, under the testing plan, 4A. He's only giving two options there. Okay. Then I think that needs to probably be changed because I don't see any use case of just sending that notification to the graders. Right. He does have it in the purpose that, you know, the question is, is it to allow instructors to set whether the notice should go only to assignment takers or to also include graders? So yeah. I think that's the additional thing is that he's saying there is that he wants to, it, it you know, the notification. Right, to go to the graders to, as well. As well, yeah. But that's not what is in the test plan. So on section four of that test plan in A, he has the assignment takers as the default and then the graders um, also is that, oh, is that oh, graders only is the name of the button that he seems to have. We would, I would just change that. What do you guys think to yes. graders too, <laughs> or, you know, um, something similar to the, the, the default 
naming conventions on that would probably be something to think about. Mm -hmm. Send notification too, and then just the names. Us students, uh, great or takers. Uh, there has to be another uh, participants uh, or um, or graders. I mean, uh, in addition, like you can't. I think it should just um, not allow you to do. What do you think about it? Not allowing to the um, students not to be notified if you're checking off that something has to be sent that a due date a notification is being sent wouldn't the would they I, would they never just let the graders know i don't think so not with a 24-hour notification, notification of when it's due mm -hmm. right. i wouldn't it. think so either i can see that if the goal was to you know remind the student the goal of that setting was to remind the students hey get this submitted mm -hmm. And his goal for this ticket, he says, is to make it so the instructors had the verification that, yeah, the students were sent this. Mm -hmm. Having the possibility of it being sent to the instructors, but not the students. Is dangerous, in my opinion. Is extremely dangerous. Where the right. instructor will say, oh, they would have seen this, not realizing they checked the wrong option. Mm -hmm. So let's note that... Um, in our notes that we just want to make sure that the uh, that the assignment takers get sent the notification and that the uh, the other is additional that that first sentence that he said in the general settings because uh, it does seem like that would be very nice to have uh, as a TA or having been a second instructor it really would have been nice to get those notification reminders as well. Okay. Anything else you want to add that or? No, the patch that originally this came from was it was a a, a fix just to limit it to students. Um, I, you know, I, there's already a way in preferences to disable this if someone doesn't want to get it. I wonder if the, the better fix is just to, to re revert that and have it sent to everybody again. I don't know why people wanted it to be, you know or have a property if some school does want to limit it to only students rather than have some kind of complex selection that is going to be difficult to test. I don't know if this is, what, this can, is too much. Where did it come from? I mean, like it was just, a, you said it was a property that was changed well, in the past? Well, if you look at the related ticket, it was, there was a, uh, a ticket that said, 24-hour reminder just limited to students they made it so tas and instructors didn't get it so orig originally it was sent to everybody and somebody in somebody in 2019 said that they wanted only this only students to get the email huh. and then alan said he wants to get Every, he wants to get everybody. It's already configurable as a as a preference too. So if an individual user like didn't like seeing any of these, they can turn it off. But I don't know. Maybe it's easier just to either revert this or put this behind a property. I can agree with Miguel that it adds a lot of complexity to, to creating selecting what you want. I mean, a lot of people already miss checking. Uh, yeah you know, checking various boxes and right there's a lot of boxes and making things correct like the notification priority for certain certain things and stuff too it's like you shouldn't have to decide that right i see your point yeah we had many tickets in the past related to students that already have a submission that received the the email so i think we added like two or three years ago logic to only send the, the reminder to students without a submission. And now we have tickets in other platforms like Moodle that everybody receives an email and they have submissions, so it's confusing. So I think right now it's not, I don't think it's confusing in Sakai anymore because only students without a submission receives the reminder. 
So students without a submission get the 24 hour notice. Correct. If I'm a student and I make a submission, I will not receive the email. That seems reasonable to me. Yeah. The only thing I get, we get tickets right now is the, the number of hours because we send a reminder one week before the, the due date and not 24 hours. That could be improved. That could be that could be improved. Um, that could be nice. If, how did you change the timing on that? There's a property, and you can you can establish the number of hours, but not the number of days. And we have that property to one week. But in the UI, the student, the instructors see like 168 hours before the due date. Got it. I think will be good to show like seven days before the due date. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's some. I mean, right now is is just the number of hours as a property, and I believe that can be improved to use. I don't know hours, days, or weeks. You know. I do. I mean, yeah. in our instances right now, it displays 168 hours, something like that. It's a serious countdown. Um, One week. But that's a separate ticket. That's going to be a separate Jira. Yeah, yeah, it's a separate, <laughs> it's a separate ticket. It's a separate ticket. When um, we enabled this feature, when we enabled this feature like two or three years ago, we had complaints that students with submissions receiving the emails and instructors receiving the emails. So we had many complaints. So we limited to students without a submission only. Because most of instructors, most instructors don't want to receive these emails. And now we have Moodle tickets related to the same problem. In Moodle, there's an analytics component that sends these emails one week before the due date. Mm -hmm. And instructors are complaining about this because they don't want to receive this, this, these emails. And, and even students with submission are complaining. Students with submission are complaining that they know about that they're notified about the deadline. Yeah, it's confusing because they yeah. think that they, they may not submit it. properly or the submission okay. is missing or I don't know. So they go to Sakai and they see that the submission is done. So they spend extra time ensuring that the submission is there. So I believe the email must not be sent to those students. I agree. And then they probably email their instructor, this did, did this really submit? And then the yeah, instructor yeah, exactly, gets exactly. irritated. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So uh, at the end we have a pile of tickets, all of the all of them related, but all of them related to the same batch of, of you know emails. So let's see what our solution is then, um, at least on this, is basically to um, on this particular issue is to have the notice sent only to students and have it set as a property. And that's that. <laughs> is that. Is that what we're coming down to? I think so. OK. Could you repeat that? I wasn't quite ready to take a note. Uh, sure. Um, we, <laughs> we've come to a. Um, it, we're, I'm checking with the group to see if we've come to the agreement that the technically and um, uh, as far as usability that the submission notification uh, be set for students um, as a property and only and so that it's not adding more complexity to the assignment. Thank you for doing that okay. notes. I appreciate it. Anyone else want to chime in? Um, this is what the group is for. OK. Uh, we have a few more minutes. We'll let's try and get one more done.
We have SAC 46946. That in the chat for everyone. the correct one. Yes, okay. This one is uh, resources add custom instructor notification option. In resources instructors have the option. Did I do this one twice? My apologies if I did. No, I think this is related to the other one. I think. Oh, okay. Because if you notice down in the comments, Andrea added a comment pointing to the other one we talked about. Oh, true. Okay. And there's a note on that one pointing to this one. This one. Okay. Um, look, I'm getting all confused. <laughs> all right. We've already done the other one. So we're going to, uh, uh, we will note that um, to see the notes on the other ticket. And let's see what else if we have. One sec. I lost my Confluence page. One second, I'll get right back to it. go um i have some notifications amigo um so amigo okay this one comes back from it's four seven four six eight eight seven and i'll give you the link to that Surprise, it's from Tiffany. Yeah, this this might be a little too long. I think we only have nine minutes. So um, we might have to come back uh, and put this in the parking lot. So it's a feature request for Samago, which is testing quizzes for those who are on the call who don't know it. Um, record the first submission score for the grade. Instructors like to be able to record the first submission score for a student's grade in case in the use cases following quizzes are used as homework assignments okay each quiz has a due date only one submission allowed and this initial submission is the grade the instructor wants recorded for each student however instructors would like to edit the settings on the quiz after the due date to allow multiple submissions this will allow students a practice answering the questions again currently the instructor needs to create a, sep a separate practice copy of the each homework quiz that is not sent to the grade book to allow for this. Um, I could have sworn as she says, I've seen a Jira with this before, but you can't find it. So um, the use case, uh, I, I, we have that in our institution where we have uh, people who want to use, who want these submitted, um, but I'm not sure if she's, if Tiffany's speaking of like the, the first submission score is put through, but then they change it to allow multiple submissions and they want to keep the first score or they just want that as a practice I'm, I'm, and they get to take it multiple times. Um, so I I'm think not... that's exactly what she's saying. Yeah. So initially the, the assessment is set up with for one submission. Mm -hmm. The students take that, make that attempt. Um, and that's the score that they should receive. OK. And but then, then the instructor oh, wants to reopen it, allow multiple submissions, and not count any of those scores, because those might be higher. Or perhaps not have to reopen it, but just allow unlimited submissions for them to practice the concepts, but still only mm -hmm. the first initial attempt is right. recorded. Yeah. The only I, question I have about that would be is, OK, what happens if a student did not take the quiz during the assigned period? They should get a zero. Mm -hmm. 
But then if they, then it's opened up for multiple submissions, then that student could then go in and take it and now they're going to have a score. Score it uh, probably something above a zero. Presumably. Like I said, I'm thinking the real effect isn't going to be that they reopen it, but just that they, from the initial creation, allow multiple submissions. Right, that's my thought. And then right, but still, bias. somebody that doesn't doesn't take it by the due date will then be able to take it and get a score. If How do you the, prevent that? Same way you do any other time the instructor right. extends the due date. If they extend the due date or the late submission date, anyone without a submission can still submit. Anytime you go back in and open up a test, you have the possibility of students who didn't submit previously being able to go in and do it. Yeah. And that but then the instructor has then the instructor has to go in and and change scores then. Well, that's just it. What is the scoring that they're trying to keep? If they're trying to keep the first one, they're trying they to keep the first score. That's then, the score they want. Okay, but they want, but if this is an assignment that's due say tomorrow at noon, uh huh. Okay, everybody that that does it by tomorrow noon gets that score. Okay, now I open it up to let them do it again for practice. Joe student who never took it in the first place now goes in, can do the practice. They'll get a score, which will then count because it's the first score that they have because they never submitted before. Right. And that's the instructor is going to have to be alert think, for that. Charles, I don't think that's what any instructor, I don't think that's what, that would happen even if the setting was, you know, to accept the highest or the last. If they open it up to allow more attempts for practice, the student could still get a higher score and that would be the one recorded. So so what, yeah. you're, what you're talking about is not something unique to, rec to recording the mm -hmm. first score. Okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. So I think more what the actual use case would be based on the instructors I have that have done something similar is instead of allowing just a single submission, um, they'd allow unlimited, but still only record the first one and not go back in and open it up. Just to, here's the due date. You can mm -hmm. take it as many times as you want, but only your first attempt is recorded. Right. Because right now I've got instructors who are using the workaround that Laura mentioned in there, which is Make Tiffany, a copy. Make a copy that was on school that was not in the grade book. That was a lie. Mm -hmm. attempts. Yeah, we do the same thing here, um, but that's also cleaner too. Then there's nothing. We're not recoding something to take the first score only. I don't know. Logically, I don't think that would have to be too complicated because it's not like the first score or is discarded at all. No, it's still there. You're right. It's true. Like I mean, it, it's not the opposite of of take the the last score. Yeah. Yeah. So, are we looking for a property then that says you know send the send the because when you do, you were just speaking about it, Christina, when the um, except the accept score the accepted score what is that field called i can't remember if multiple, um, it says like if multiple attempts are selected let me just go to tests and quizzes yeah i'm looking in 21 it just says if multiple submissions record the and then there's a radio button highest score last score so it said she just wants to add a first score. score. She just wants mm -hmm. to add a first score. Is that really it? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then that would okay. also have to include the messages, um, like if students take it and this thing is set to last score or average score, it pops up with a little warning that says pretty much even if you don't get to the last question, this could have an impact on your grade. Mm -hmm. They would need a similar message saying only your first score is recorded. You can continue to take this, but it's not going to have any effect on your actual recorded grade. Okay. If you could throw that in the um, notes, because that's a, I like the way you said that. Um, I will add that to the, uh, to the ticket. Okay. 
because I really do think that that is an important concept if that's what we're really doing is just adding something. Now, for those who are technical on the call, what do you think? Matt, Miguel, either? What what would you call the bit that the that that lang that the warning language should be added to? Oh, um, the information warn. Somebody else is typing. I'll just stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, <coughs> he's asking. No worries. It's just uh, we were looking at this uh, this last ticket, and we just want Miguel to know. Um, since you can submit take the, to take the highest score, to take the average score, is there a way to have it just take the first score only, no matter how many times the exam is taken as a... Is that mm -hmm. a horrible programming thing? No, it's not. Um, it's not the first time I heard this. Comment. Yeah, this is, a, this is an older ticket from Tiffany, but... Yeah, but I heard this this requirement for other institutions, institutions that want to record the first attempt. First, okay, and that's what goes to the and grade book. And compare and compare with the future. Okay. Yeah, because you know many many institutions are really interested in analytics, and mm -hmm. they would like to they would like always to to analyze the first attempts. Excellent. And compare with with future with future attempts of the same assignment assessment, and also compare between you know submissions and you know make a comparison against you know. right and the average, and I think there's yeah. even some stuff that goes to the is it the grade book that actually shows some charting on that so, um, all right, well folks, I really appreciate um, the time that you've taken with us today. Uh, I have a. And uh, my my walk in has just walked in the door, so I'm going to actually have to go grab that. I'm going to pause, uh, stop the recording now, and. Um... <laughs>